right, the great search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thank you, DigiKey, for making this segment possible. Lady uses her powers of engineering and her decades almost now of using the DigiKey site to find parts you need. Kind of important now because it's hard to find some parts. Yes. So theoretically, if someone was looking for a part, maybe this week we're going to help them figure that out. Yeah, I take inspiration because I think the people, you know, what people are publicly talking about is what people are privately struggling with. And um, yeah. we had that quote from last week for the article where I think, you know, we were we were quoting about um, how hard it is to, to get parts and it's a struggle and like things get delayed. And also we mentioned the Great Search was a, uh, a good place to go. If you people yeah. have questions, go to Discord. Tell us what part you're looking for, and we will help you. So this week, um, let's go to the computer. So I we got this notice for a crowd. You're you're a, a crowdfund uh, backer of this project. Yeah. This is the Glasgow Interface Explorer, and I thought this was interesting because they were having problems having a part. And I thought, like, I'm not saying I'm going to find that part. I'm just saying here's how I would go about trying to find an alternative. How would, how would I solve it? And I'm sure they have very good reasons for the reasons they're, they're, they're doing what they're doing. So this is not to say I, I know better than them. I'm just, uh, I'm just taking inspiration. Yeah. So anytime uh, we see anyone talking about parts, we're like, oh, how will we get that? How will yeah. We, I'm just using it as, as, as a, a basis, as a, as yeah. a springboard. Um, so the last missing part that they have is a TPS 73101 DBVT LDO voltage regulator for uh, GPO bank control. They ordered it, they can get it, and then like people are like scalping it. Um, and they're like, we're looking for parts, but the TPS 73101 is a pretty unique part. Besides reverse polarity protection, also has fold back current limit. Uh, and that's one of the things that they like. So they like that there's this, feed, there's this back current uh, limiting capability. Um, so I thought that was interesting because I've never really specced a board with that part. And I, I do want to mention, um, so if you go to, you know, the TPS 78101, uh, sorry, 73101, which of course is not in stock here because if it wasn't stock, they'd buy it. Um, so this part, the fold back current isn't something that's, that's listed in the specifications they have you know overcurrent over temperature and short circuit inverse polarity but those are like additional product features those aren't things that you can select for um the digikey search is really really strong when you're talking about um quantitative qualities of your uh of your chip so you know you're like what's the input voltage max what's the current output max what's the inductance what's the the Q, what's the ESR, all of these things, you know, for your components, that's where the DigiKey search is really, really great. But when you're talking about, like, qualitative things, where it's like, does it have this feature, that's where it's going to get a lot tougher because, you know, it, it, it's it's not something you just look up in a data sheet. Um, fold back current, like I said, it's not, it's not in there. Like, you might say, well, that's short circuit protection or overcurrent protection, but it sounds like it's a very specific capability that they're looking for in this regulator. And so um, that's why for this, if I was going to find an alternative for this part, well, first off, you know, this part is a, a SOT 23.5 LDO. Having dealt with SOT 23 LDOs, you know, this is a very standard package in size. So anything that we've regulated that we find with this package overall, the pinout's going to be the same because like every SOT 23.5 regular I've ever seen. I mean, like, of course, check the data sheet, but it's, it's, I've never seen one that doesn't have the exact same pinout from one to the other. It's a very standardized pinout, thankfully. Not always true. You know, transistors don't even, they only have three pins and they don't have a standard pinout. Um, but uh, this chip does. So, yeah, so this part is, you know, not available and they're like, we're not going to have any till uh, 2022. Maybe you don't want to wait till 2022. Um, so, this is actually where I would go to DigiKey, uh, sorry, to TI not to DigiKey, and look at what TI recommends. Because one thing that I know from working with TI parts is they often ha they often section out their regulators into um, capability slots. So for example, um, let's go to like, uh, we have like the TPS, uh, 
TPS 61023. So the 61023 regular, uh, this is like a boost converter. Um, from what I remember, this is part of a family and it was like the 61023 and 61021 and et cetera, et cetera. There was like a family of them. Hold on, let me see if I can find it. Let's see, I think it's if I search for the TK61. Yeah, so there's there's always going to be like within that part number, there's usually like a family of parts. So they'll start with the first few numbers, but then like one will be like a two amp regulator and one will be a four amp and one will be a three amp. So you'll be able to get like different um, levels of output based on like the part number, but it won't be like a sub part number. It'll actually be a totally new part number. So what I mean is like if you're, if you know, you're specking, a uh, when TI makes this boost converter, right? They they make a boost converter, and some are just going to make it through the process and be able to like handle four amps. Some are going to handle three amps. Some are going to handle two, and then they'll bin those and they'll separate them, or you know however they decide the process. So you can get a a two amp version, a three amp version, a four amp version. So this is actually also um, in the the power boost. So the PowerBoost 500 and the 1000 actually use, um, if you look closely uh, to here, these actually use almost the same exact layout, the 500 and the 1000, but the, and the chip is the same package as well. But this is the um, TPS 61090, hold on. This is a TPS 61090 with a two amp switch. And the Power Boost 1000 is a TPS, uh, sorry, hold on. This is the TPS 6130. So the TPS 6130 is the one that has four amp internal si switch. The TPS 6190 has the, uh, the two amp switch. So the smaller number has the more current that's that's how it goes sometimes. It doesn't mean anything. Um, okay, so the, the upshot is is that if you're trying to find a regulator, a boost converter, or something from TI, and you can't find your exact part, you might be able to go up and down in either accuracy or current output or like voltage input limit and find something that has almost the exact same capabilities but like a slightly different um, specification. So uh, if we go to, uh, let's see, it was the... TPS uh, 73101, the DBVT is a, you know, a sub part, uh, sub, yes, a sub part number that usually specifies the temperature, the packaging, and the, um, uh, the reeling, like how big the reel is. So we can ignore that. So this is, yeah, so this is part of a family. There's the 73101, which is, you know, the specific component. And then um, this one has adjustable output and there's also the family TPS 731 and this is you can see this is like doesn't have the full part number that's because it's a it's a family of regulators including um, ones with fixed voltage output so the 101 is the adjustable but then there's like the uh, 73118 which is 1.8 731 uh, five zero, which is a five point zero volt. So, like, there's a wide range of them, um, but you're gonna have the same functionality, like that fold back over current protection that they wanted, is going to be in in every part of that family. Um, so, I thought was interesting is that if you look, they have you know a range of very similar boards with similar performance, um, and probably the same kind of functionality. So, let's look at. Um, let's look at find other, do I want to find other regulars? Yeah, let's, let's do find other regulars. Let's see if they have the fold back protection as one of the, uh, the output capability. So this is 7313, V in min, uh, let's not have an, a maximum output. So this is, I'm searching for the 73101 and then I'm just kind of 
deleting things that aren't as important to me. Um, so no V, the V and Max can be, I guess this is fine, this is fine. We can say maybe the noise is not as important. Um, I don't care about fixed output because I want adjustable output. Let's remove the V and Min so it can be a wider range. And V and Max has be at least 5 volts. V out Max, yeah, 5 volts, that's fine. And then the minimum as well. Okay. So um, it has about 13 different parts, and you can see that this is that 73101. Uh, it's still here. Um, oh, wait, we wanted to find the uh, fold back. Let's see if this is in here. Actually, I don't remember if this is in here. Okay, here you go. Fold back over current protection. Okay, so here's the ones that have that fold back protection and have at least, uh, you know, maybe the same amount of current. So there's the 731 and there is the 732. And if you look and compare between the two, the 731, 732, both have the same list of functionality. This one's a little bit more expensive. Um, this one looks like it has the same number of fixed outputs as adjustable outputs. And this one is 250 milliamp output instead of 150. So that makes sense. The 731 is 150. 732 is 250. So um, if we look at the 732, now again, you know, if I had more time, I'd go through the entire data sheet and I'd compare it one by one uh, to see if the quiescent current is what I need, if the dropout's what I need. But it could be that like you could just use this instead of the 731, just use the 732, like the next step up. Um, so if you go to DigiKey, I think TPS 73, 73201, because the 01 is the adjustable version. And um, let's also only show in stock, because we only care about if they have in stock. That's what we're looking for. So it looks like there's two versions. So for, I don't know what DCQ is. I don't know if this is, this looks like it's a, uh, a different package. Although, that's weird, because I didn't know this came in another package. But they do have the SOT uh, 235 in it. It's available through, you know, Marketplace. It's through a third party. Um, Rochester Electronics, which sells, you know, uh, it's, it's gray market. It's not the official distributor, but they do sell, um, you know, distribution quality parts. It looks like they have about 3,000 available. Um, only thing is, is the price is kind of high. You know, it, it's going to be $2 instead of what you would normally budget for it, which I believe in the search set a budget of about 50 cents. So, I mean, the question is, you know, is the extra dollar fifty price worth it to get this uh, board out there on the road? Um, another option that I would do is if you don't want to go with the TPS 73201, there's also the 73401, which is the next step up in linear regulators. Um, and this one, let's also only show in stock. And this one, oh, this one, yeah, you can get these a little bit cheaper. Um, they go down to like a dollar or 73 cents, but they don't have a lot in stock and they're not getting them to October, so never mind. Um, I thought these that they actually had some of these in stock, but if you can find through another distributor, um, you could also change to the WSON version package. I guess they come, come in both SOT23 and WSON. But I think the best bet right now, you know, it's, it's annoying to pay more for, uh, whoops, one second. It's annoying to pay more for a regulator when, you know, normally you'd spec at 50 cents and you're, you know, you're pay for $2. On the other hand, it's two dollars, not five dollars, and if you really want to get it out the door, this might be more important. And uh, maybe next time we'll also look at maybe how to find other regulators with foldback um, current protection, because again, it's it's a unique thing that you're going to have to know how to find. Um, but this is a good alternative, you know, if you really want to get your board out and you don't mind spending a little bit more. Uh, I think this would probably be a drop-in alternative, and of course, you know, it has more current capability, so you can even 
connect more stuff to the output of your board. All right, and that's a great church.